Welcome to Genealogy Garage. I am Julie Huffman, the genealogy librarian here at the Los Angeles Public Library. Genealogy Garage is LAPL's program in which we present topics related to the world of genealogy. We are co-sponsored by the Southern California Genealogical Society and the Genealogical Society of Hispanic America, Southern California chapter. Genealogy Garage typically happens the third Saturday of each month, but we do miss a few. Our next Genealogy Garage will be November 19th, and we'll have a librarian from the Huntington Library here to talk about their unbelievable resources. If there's anything you've been interested in, to learn about, um, or you want to join my email list to see what's coming up, go ahead and just send me an email. There is my email address right there. Recently, I've heard from some of you that you're interested in Sephardic Jewish genealogy or Ukraine genealogy. So those are a couple topics I'm going to be working on for next year. Um, also, uh, my pal and board member of the Southern California Genealogical Society, Charlotte Bocage, she and I are going to be doing a session on Louisiana genealogy next year. So um, go ahead and sign up for my, send me an email if you want to sign up for that list to hear what's coming up or tell me what you'd like to see. So for today's session, you can find a link to a handout on the very YouTube page uh, upon which you're viewing this today. If you just look on, in the area underneath this video, you'll see a short description of the program. And then if you just click show more, it will bring up a link to a Google document that is today's handout. But if you have any trouble finding this or downloading it, send me an email and I'll send you a copy of the handout after the presentation. This session is being recorded and will be available to watch after the fact. So don't worry about taking too many notes. You can always watch it again and pause it, take notes, that sort of thing. So don't worry about uh, getting carpal tunnel uh, writing down everything our knowledgeable presenter has to say, um, and he's got a lot to say. So, Also, please type any questions you might have in the chat box of the YouTube page, and at the end of the program, or end of the presentation, I will ask those of the presenter. Now, today's event is an early kickoff to the Los Angeles Public Library's wonderful LA Libros Festival. Let me just bring up the URL here. In honor of Latinx Heritage Month, the library presents many in-person and free online um, programs uh, related to, to this festival. And so you just go to this URL to see all the things that are going on September 23rd and 24th of this month. And as a reminder that most of us in California today are descended from immigrant ancestors or are immigrants ourselves, I want to mention that we are broadcasting from the land of this country's original occupants, the Gabrielino Tongva tribal nation. And all of us who pursue this maddening and fascinating and entertaining um, discipline of genealogy know that we are all family. And as such, I am happy to lead with love, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> now, let me bring up John. So today we have someone visiting who I am guessing is probably my eighth cousin. <laughs> probably on the German side, on the German side, John. Um, but I'm sure somewhere we can find a connection. Um, so our friend John Schmall is here today to talk about wonderful resources available for finding early California ancestors, specifically, not exclusively, but specifically pre-1848 Mexican and indigenous ancestors. 
So, John, how are you doing today? You're also broadcasting Good. from L.A., right? Yes, I'm from Santa Monica. Excellent. Okay, so um, I'm going to bring up your presentation. Yeah, go to the PowerPoint. All right, one moment. All right. All right. And I'll let you have it. Okay, I'm going to stop my camera now. And I'm going to be ready to start this. I'm only spending a short time. Good morning, everybody, by the way. Um, we're going to spend a little time on the PowerPoint, but we're going to spend most of our time on Family Search Catalog because I have a lot to explore. Some things which you may not have found in the past, but hopefully you will be aware of in the future. And so um, with regards to this, a lot of people are in, interested in their indigenous ancestors. And the mission records through Huntington Library and Santa Barbara Mission can be very useful. And there are some available even through Family Search. But as you can see, California was very diverse. It had a lot of Indian groups in it uh, before the Spaniards arrived in 1769. Now, most of the research you do for your Native American ancestors in California will be post-1848 because you want to get back to 1848. But then once you get back to 1848, there are some really good resources to help you out. And this is a picture of the current reservations. I mean, California does have 109 federally recognized tribes at this point in time. And it's important when you're tracing your California ancestry, your Native American ancestry, to try and find out which tribe you're descended from. Because some people just say, I'm Indian, but they don't know what kind. So the goal is always to try and link yourself up to maybe a, a, a combination of the Mission Indians or a particular tribe. Now, National Archives, I'm not going to discuss it much here, but there's a lot of it in the first few pages of the handout. And so I just wanted to point out that this is research that maybe some of you are not interested in, but uh, I thought I'd help you along. There are a lot of interesting things on Ancestry.com. You can access the Indian census rolls from 1885 to 1940. Very valuable information for the whole country, but especially for California. And you can access Ancestry.com if you come down the Los Angeles Public Library, or go to the one of the Family Search Libraries. And then there's the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And also, this is something that I also talked about in the handouts. Now, the Spanish land grants, I'll be talking to you about that shortly. But I wanted to point out the Early California Population Project database. This is what the Huntington Library has. And it encompasses records from 21 of the California missions, including Los Angeles Plaza Church and Santa Barbara Presidio. And really, it has extracts of all the records from 1769 to 1850. Uh, it doesn't have the originals except for a few like Santa Clara. But this is a whole different thing you want to explore. And you know, I've done a lot of research going up to the Santa Barbara Mission Archives and sometimes they will do the research for you if you're specific enough on your requests. And I went up there actually about, I think, seven times in the last year and a half. Um, but they have also done research for me that I requested. And, but they do like you to be specific. And there are a lot of links that help you with ECBB database. You will also be having a presentation about from the Huntington Library in November, which will talk to you more about that. And before I get off of that topic, I just want to say that the database is kind of intimidating with all the fields that they have. But it's really great to work in once you get used to it. And on my uh, Indigenous Mexico database, I actually have uh, a few PowerPoint slides talking a little bit about it. But then in November, perhaps you'll get some help too. Now, here's an example of a marriage of a soldier, Jose Raimundo Carrillo, with Tomasa Lugo, 
it was that was from 1781. Pretty nice record, isn't it? And then here is the marriage of Antonio Maria Lugo in 1796. Now, not all the records are as beautiful as this, but I do want to point out that uh, some of them are. You know, some of the Indian records are only two lines. But it's something that if you have not explored it yet, you may want to. So now we are going to go to the web. So I'll stop the screen. And I'm going to share my screen for... Oh, John, you might have removed the um, oh, I did. wrong deal. Oh, okay. Let's... Uh... Try it. Just bring it up again and just share it as a Chrome tab, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the family search? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm mainly going to be working in the catalog. And, um, and we'll be able to do some sample searches later that maybe some of you will ask about. But the first thing I'm going to do here is when you go to search records, Probably some of you already know about this, but you can go to Mexico, for example, or United States, Europe, South America. We're going to go to California. And when you go to this database, they have indexed historical records, 24.5 million California birth records. They have 67 collections in all. And if I want to see all the California collections, I can just press this. Then you see all these different things that you have. And if you see the little icon at the end, the camera, that means that you can actually go in there and maybe, uh, let's try a name, uh, Ramon Martinez. Let's see what we get. So well, here is a person that died in 1942. Let's look in here at the digital copy. And sure enough, he's one of the people that's uh, in here. So you don't always have this option. And you notice down at the bottom, it has the index. And it highlights the name of the person you're looking for. But I wanted to go back to where we were. Now, these are for a large range of, of period, a large period of time. And what I'm going to show you is you're going to see all the California collections again. But when you go down here at the very bottom on the right side, you can say pre-1700, 1750, 1779, and go all the way up to 1849. And these are the collections that are specifically for those earlier periods of time. Not as much, granted, but I'm sure that if you're interested in California research for your family tree, I'm sure you have a lot of post-1849 records that you want to look at, too. And you can see down here on the right side that you see the camera, and that means that there's a digitized copy for you to look at. Okay, so I won't explore that anymore because I want to go to the catalog. The catalog is down here. It's the fifth entry under search. And the very first thing I'm going to do before I do sample California searches is I'm going to look for the state of California by itself. Now, that may seem like a strange thing to do, but... You bring up all these things that may turn out to be helpful. Like native races, they have 101 different collections. And these are various things related to school records, census records, death records. And so some of these may turn out to be useful. And you may also discover them while using keyword searches. So there, there's a lot to learn in that. Now, when you are researching a place in California, it's really very helpful for you to 
check out the records of the place where your ancestors came from. And it's one thing, it's really important to remember that you search for both the city where your ancestors came from and the county because different records are heard or are held on different levels. Now I'm looking at Montecito up in Santa Barbara County. Now it doesn't look like there's a lot of stuff here, does there? So you're gonna be interested in looking at the county most, but you will notice right here that there's an Episcopal church, the record starting in 1889, and Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Church. And some of these records where you see the little camera at the end, some of them you're not able to enter unless you go into a family search center. But some of them you can go into from the comfort of your home. And the baptism start in 1907. And here is the first page. And I think a lot of people don't realize that they're going to find things like this. Now, we're going to go to Santa Barbara County. We're going to take off the Montecito. And we're going to go just, see, I could put Santa Barbara City, but for now, I just want the county. Now, this may look a little too confusing to a lot of people. But there are some things you should really look for. One is biographies, because you may find maybe a one paragraph biography of an ancestor of yours in a particular county history book. So that, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here for Santa Barbara. But there's also vital records. Now, unfortunately, they don't hold many vital records after 1920. But they do hold a lot of, here's birth records, for example. And you can look at these as well. When you see the, the little uh, magnifying glass, that means there's a specific index for it. Now, I do have to warn you that up until 1900, the birth records and death records and stuff aren't that great for Santa Barbara. But occasionally you do come across a good one. But not everybody is in those records. So you can see here that um, most of this information is held on one, two, three, four, five different microfilms. So they have them broken down by items. So that means a specific microfilm is split into several places. And sometimes you do have to uh, do a little bit of figuring for that. But just as an example here, we're going to go in and we're going to search for uh, Leandro Ortega. So they didn't find a Leandro, but they did find a Jose, Jose L. Ortega. And you see the information coming up on the right side. He's born 1886. And you do see that there's a camera here. They'll view the image. So we're going to go into that. And I studied Leandro Ortega, but I actually didn't study this particular one. I've not come across it before, so it's kind of nice to find it. And I see that what it is is his name is mentioned here, but it's not one of the actual um, birth records that you see. So that's a problem with Santa Barbara. They show some birth records. Other ones are just listed in a line. But you do see other Ortegas here. Inez, Alfred, and uh, there's an O'Neill up here. So there, there are good aspects and bad aspects of this, but I think anybody wants to be able to cover all the grounds that they can when they're doing this kind of research. Okay, so we're backing out, and this was the vital records. The things that you should check most are churches, vital records, land records, and biographies. 
So let's look at land and property. Deeds from 1844 to 1917. Not all of these things are available, but if you had ancestors who owned property from the 1840s to the present, this might be just what you want to look for. And usually they have a little line across it if you can only see it when you go to the, to the library. <coughs> Excuse me. But as you can see here, you can access this from the comfort of your home. And you enlarge it by going to the third um, icon down at the left, on the left side, upper left side. And then it gives you the index reading of where this is recorded, this land deed. And then you go to the land deeds that follow. So there's a lot that can be done here. And so I hope that maybe this would be somewhat useful to people. So biographies, there's census information. There was a special California census in 1852. And one of the interesting things here in Santa Barbara County, abstracts of title, this isn't for the whole county, but I actually found a couple of uh, ranchos that I was interested in. And you can access these directly too. So I would recommend that maybe you check it out and make sure your property wasn't here. I was looking for Rancho Nuestra. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we're going to move to another spot. As I said, look for the city and look for the county. So here is Ventura County. They have directories, church history, genealogy periodicals, history books, obituaries, and vital records. I can tell you that their vital records aren't quite as good as the vital records from some of the other counties. I'm kind of disappointed in that. But I want to show you something that maybe some of you will be very interested in. We are going to go now to Ventura, the city. We're just looking at the county, but this is the city. One thing you may want to find interesting is they have the mission records. And lo and behold, you can go right into them. Now they, um, they started item three here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this other section here. 1782 records. And we're going to go to the first page. These are the mission records. Now, most mission records for most of the missions in California are not available to you unless you go into the library or visit the Santa Barbara Mission, which has a collection of many of the missions for most of California. Or perhaps San Fernando, although I haven't been there in years. But as you can see, there are beautiful mission records here for Ventura, for San Buenaventura. I mean, these are really grade A records, I think. And you have them going up to a considerable period of time. You have marriages up to 1893, burials up to 1912. There's a lot of value here. Now, I want to tell you that for the Santa Barbara Mission Records for Indians, they also have those, but you can't access them from home. You have to go into the library. And so, like I said, Ventura doesn't look like it has that much, but what it does have is really good from the standpoint of the San Buenaventura mission. Immigration is also something you might want to check out when you're doing some of these searches. Now I'm going to go to Oakland, Alameda County. And as you can see, on the county level, we find a lot of things. We see a census for 1902. We see biography. 
you can go into these if you want. This is uh, newspapers. Let's see if that one's available to go into. It looks like you can go into that. So it's mostly recent information, though. And you can go farther down the line. You can go to church records, First Congregational Church, First Presbyterian Church. Some of these you can go into. Others you might not be able to go into. Uh, regarding Catholic Church records, it doesn't look like they have them here. But uh, always look for any kind of church that you are interested in because some of them are here. Some you can access from home. Some you have to go into the library to do it. And then let's check out vital records. Notice that we have probate records and funeral homes, directories. Under vital records... I've, most of California, on county level, I've seen that you're able to go into these even from home. So here are birth certificates from 1870 on. And you can they're available online, as it says here. But for example, let's just go in. Here's the card index. The register of births. Let's go into that. And here you see the register of births with the little index down at the bottom. And of course you can search for a name. I'm gonna search for the surname Ward. That's the family that I had searched on. And sure enough, it was an Irish family. In fact, I know this family right here at the top. This Ward is born 1885. His parents had come from Ireland. And as you can see, it lists the information on the right side. But they also have the image, which is this little camera. View the image. And so we're looking here for the name ward. It's a male. It's down here at lines, I guess it says 65, it's 1885. And he was born January 28th. It says his father's Thomas Ward, his mother's Margaret Holland. And it says on the second side, both the parents are born in Ireland. The father was a gardener. And of course, you'd find all that stuff by looking up here at the top, along the top part it says name sex color date name of father name of mother nativity of father nativity of mother etc etc so you can see the value of these and so I, I hope that if you haven't used this in the past that maybe you will be able to use it in the future and then before we go to some other searches let's look and see what they have for Alameda County because we were just searching in Oakland. And right here, they have a lot of stuff available too. Biography, history of Alameda County. A lot of the old history books, county history books from the 1800s and early 1900s usually have little um, histories of each of the townships and sometimes they even, for California, they talk about the Spanish grants. And then they have a section, sometimes a second volume, that talks about biographies of notable people. And, you know, there's a chance your ancestors can be in there. Let's look what they have for vital records. For vital records for Alameda County, they have a marriage book that starts in 1866. And you can go directly into it. That's the one really good thing about vital records. So I want to encourage people to do that. This is split into several parts. So you have to figure out um, where item two is. 
And what you can do to do that is open up a different um, family search screen catalog and then go down to the catalog and put in the film number, like what I'm doing right here. We're going to go to that right now. See, here is group film fiche image number. Put in that number, and then it shows you where your interest is, which is item two. But they have a lot of other items. So I really encourage you that when you find your item is at item three or item five or whatever, that you go to a separate screen, put in the film number, and kind of figure out how many items are spread across there so that you can search in there as much as you want. We know that this one is probably going to be towards the beginning. And so you can shuffle down here using your mouse. And I think at some point we'll see an item two. Maybe this is it. Alameda County's marriage book, page 185. Out of 5688 pages, my gosh, I've never seen that many before. This is not the best quality, but you can enlarge it on the plus sign here. So this gives you a little idea of the types of searches you can do. Now, there's one search I want to do that I think if you have Santa Barbara ancestors, you might be interested in. One, five, four, eight, two, nine. This has various records, the great register of the county. And I included a lot of this stuff on your handout. So you'll be able to check this yourself. But one of the more interesting things is, is that towards the very end, you have padrones for, uh, for Santa Barbara, meaning the censuses. And I showed that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to that. Oh, let's see. Oops. Okay, we'll come to that later. Now, earlier under California, I was showing you that you can search for all kinds of things. This is something that a lot of people don't know about. Under land records, there's a lot of valuable stuff in here. But there are some things that may be useful to you people that are searching for 1848 or earlier ancestors. And among them, there are a lot of, there's a lot of information about Spanish and Mexican land grants. Now, this is an example of something where they don't have it digitized. They have it somewhere, and you can probably find out View this catalog. Where do you find these? And it shows where they might be held. Oh, this is held at the Los Angeles Public Library, for example. But I wanted to show you the Spanish land grants. Now, to get to what you're looking for, you can use the word Spanish. I 
I thought that um, – oh, this is kind of strange. I know it's in here somewhere, and I thought it would be colored red, but it wasn't. But this gives me the opportunity to use the keywords. So what I'm going to do and under keywords, I'm going to go Spanish archives, California. Because this is what I wanted to talk about. And I think a lot of you may want to use this. You can search keywords and you can combine surnames, place names, and other things like that. And under these Spanish archives, 1833 to 1845, is a gold mine of sorts. These are the index to the Spanish archives you see for the first few, starting 1834, 1836, moving into the 1842. And you also have translations, English translations. So a lot of people don't realize that these are available for you. So you can go into them and search on them. So, for example, you go into the index. And let's go into one of the early pages. It gives you the information on where to find, uh, for, for example, this property. The grantee was Francisco Arias. And it shows the film, the file number. And so, and you have to get all that down because it does get a little bit confusing. And then you go find where they are. And you can actually go to the translated copies, but you can go to the original copies too, which will be in Spanish. So page 444. Here's a copy. Some of these are really good copies. Others are not. This seems like one that's not all that good. And then for the translated copies, you have the English version. Jurisdiction of Monterey, 1834. So... They gave this to us, and this is really helpful for people, especially if you're Spanish. You know, it's difficult to uh, translate a lot of Spanish information at one time. Now, regarding keywords, as I said, you can put in certain keywords, and you might find a lot of interesting things. Here are microfilm publications regarding Spanish private land grant claims. Okay, that doesn't lead, that doesn't have a digital collection, so it's not as interesting to us. But as you can see, and I think it was a 14 page handout, if you're interested in the surname Lugo and California, you're going to find 13 items here. And this is a pretty famous family of early California. Now, they don't have the microfilm here, but they have a digital version. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that from my screen, but you can go inside and then you can download it too. I don't want to go any farther because I'm afraid that it might mess up what we're doing here. But uh, this is something that can be really valuable. I have a copy of this. And then Vallejo and Lugo families in Alta, California. This is about the family of Don Maria, Antonio Maria Lugo. You can also uh, get a digital version here. So this can be really useful. Now, I told you to do Lugo in California. Let's see what happens if you do the surname Lugo by itself. You get seven hits. So sometimes uh, Lugo might be mentioned as a as some kind of ingredient, a keyword that is in the given book, but it's not part of the title. 
And so that's why you'll get different results. So I prefer the keyword where you can also put maybe a place name. Let's try Dominguez in California. Okay, early Dominguez families and settlements of Rancho San Pedro. This unfortunately is not a digital copy. You might be able to find another copy for it. And then there's a Helfrick family. And this is because it was a keyword, so it's not necessarily linked. This is something that might interest a lot of you, genealogical tables of Spanish and Mexican families. It's 64 pages. Um, you can go into this digital version if you'd like. I won't because it may mess up things. But uh, this is something that uh, can be very, very helpful to many of you. And you get a lot of information about the expeditions that came to California, too. This is a book I wrote, My Family Through Time, The Story of a Mexican-American Family with Donna Morales. But you can't access this here. Now, there's another Spanish families of California. This is in hard copy at the Family Search Library on Santa Barbara Boulevard. And I wouldn't be surprised to find that it's also in Los Angeles Public Library, but it is also here. It has a lot of newspaper clippings and, and genealogical tables. And so it might interest some of you. They give the information that they have here. And of course it starts with A through Alvarado. And quite often you need to adjust with the minus and plus signs so that you can um, make sure that you things aren't too large or too small. And pretty soon we'll be able to do some searches that maybe some of you will suggest. Los Angeles. Um, now, the handouts give you a lot of direct links. I'm not using them here, but you'll be able to use them in the handouts. So I'm doing more searches through keywords. So under Los Angeles censuses, you can find there's an 1897 uh, city council search. And then there's a 1790 census that many of you are aware of, but it's not uh, digitized, but it's something that may interest you in hard copy. But this is digitized. Padronas, you know, that's um, an inventory of the people receiving the sacraments for the Catholic Church. And if you go into this, you'll find that you'll uh, be able to access records. And it's only 152 pages. And I'll shrink this a little. And if you go to the first page, you can see they have a list of people. So this gives you a pinpoint picture of a certain point in time that your ancestors were here. Unfortunately, it isn't indexed. But nevertheless, you may want to check through it because maybe you have multiple ancestors in this. Anyway, um, I guess I'm ready to start taking questions of anybody who wants to do sample searches. I have more sample searches I could do, but I have a feeling there are people that might have questions. I put out a question to see if anybody wanted you to take a look into someone particular, but I haven't had any responses yet, John. 
I don't know if you want to do some of your uh, examples, and then if they come in, I'll interrupt. Okay. Um, we're going to go to San Diego now. San Diego, of course, is in San Diego County. And so under biography, I'm surprised there isn't that much, but there's probably more under the county. But under church records, you see 15 different things here. Now, a lot of them are uh, from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There's some information from the San Diego Episcopal Church records. And right here you see San Diego de Acala Mission. You can actually view a digital version of that. This is worth knowing because what it is, is it's, uh, it's extracts of records. Although, let me see. Did we go to the right item? Okay, yeah. You have, you have uh, access to mission records. Some of them are original copies, and some of them are extracts. Both can be very valuable. So this is an example of extracts. But I want to show you actual records. And as you can see, we have a lot of choices here. Right here on the third entry, you see extracts of church records. That's by Thomas Workman Temple, who did a lot of work. Getting more Spanish people than Indians, but some Indians as well. But then you can go to Parish Records, San Diego, starting in 1771, the earliest in California. And so you can see that there are a lot of different sections here. Kind of get, a, get that a little bit straight of where you are. We're going into this first one. It was not indexed. But we do see that, okay, U.S. deed to the mission. Okay, that's about the USD. That's the problem when you have multiple stuff in one film. But it's important to figure that out because some of that other stuff can be really valuable. John, I do have, I yeah. do have a question if, unless you want to finish th this thought and then I'll ask I'm almost you. finished with this anyway. Okay. But here are mission records now. I've searched through these, and I got a little bit confused about the order of things, too. But once you figure it out, it's well worth the effort. Because like the San Buenaventura mission, these records you can look at in person. You don't have to go into a family search um, thing. Uh, so I, I recommend that if you're looking for San Diego or San Buenaventura, you can find those records right online. You just have to figure out, you know, get your bearings of what you really want. And so uh, that's something I recommend. But definitely check out this San Diego information on churches if it's relevant to you. And also um, regarding San Diego, I'm now going to go to the county. You can see that there's a great deal of information. I'm going straight down to vital records because I want to see what they have with regards to death records. And they have quite a bit. It's the deaths start in 1851 to 1905. And you have indexed records. Some of the films are indexed. And hopefully most of you know how to navigate through these um, digitized collections. If you don't, well, you'll get used to it. You'll, you'll get better with time. Okay, Julie, uh, what do you have to ask? This is one question. And uh, Grave Rabbit is also wondering if there are other resources besides FamilySearch that might answer this question. 
Um, I'll tell you what. You can see my screen right now, right? Yes. I'm going to Ancestry. Of course, you either have to subscribe to this, which might be $2.99 a year if you're a person who's subscribing and using it for a lot of research, or you go into a family search library or Los Angeles Public Library. Uh, if you go to the search screen here for all collections, you can search on names and stuff, but I recommend that you go to the right side here and explore by collection. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see my mouse icon, Julie? Yes. Okay, good. That's I wanted you guys to see that. You go to view all. And then from here, let's start with just California. We put it in the title. We can put in a keyword if we wanted to, but we're going to put in just California for starters. 252 separate collections. Now, let's add a keyword. Well, maybe I should go into one of them first before I do the keywords. And as you can see, you can put in a name here. Uh, Ramon Martinez. And you get various Ramon Martinez's. You can view their images. So what we're going to do now is go to California, and we're going to search for the word. Let's try mission first. I wanted to use census, but let's try mission. Okay, we only have a couple here for the missions, unfortunately. But let's go to census. And under census, you'll find quite a few items here. The U.S. State Census for 1852. So you can say uh, Jose Ortega. And so you have all the various Jose Ortega, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, Santa Clara, etc. And so we have the Monterey census. It doesn't look like um, they have those censuses that I showed you for um, the Padrones, like 1836, 1838, um, and all that. But those are given to you, the links are given to you in the handouts. So I think you can be fine with that. Um, so for Grave Rabbit's specific question, um, do you do you see it there, John? See what what are we uh, looking for? Um, I brought up this question on the screen. Um, oh, okay. Can look. can you see that? All right. San Batista Mission Records. Okay. San Batista, what city was that in? Or I guess what I can do here is go to the catalog keywords, San Juan Batista, California. Register of deaths for San Juan Batista, but it starts 1906. Extracts of church records. So we can go into this, but it's item 15. It's way at the, oh, you can't access this from the comfort of your home, unfortunately. And then they have mission records here. Let's take a look and see if they're available to look at. Oh, wow. Let's look for burials. I have a feeling you can only access this from the library, though. 
So yeah, you would have to go into a library to access this. But and as you can see, I used this to, to found this through using the keyword search. Yes, Julie. Um, is this the kind of thing you could use the Huntington um, Early California People's Project to find? If it's before 1850, yes. So yes, I would use it to find his uh, birth, his death uh, record. Um, but I don't know about any other information beyond the burial record. So you might be looking for a newspaper article, and I'm not really sure if you'd be able to find that. There might be some documentation if he was put on trial, but I'm not sure if you're going to find that in these resources. You'd have to dig deeper. Like there are the presidial records held in the Bancroft Library, and they could have information on that. I've actually downloaded a lot of stuff from the Bancroft Library uh, on the presidial records. That would be what I would try. And if you haven't done it, it's better to go to the Bancroft Library and try and find out if you can do that. Contact them. But the procedural records are very detailed. I've actually downloaded something like 30 files from them. So it's possible you can uh, get a hold of those. But in regards to the burial record itself, you could probably go into a family search library and, and or the Los Angeles Public Library and do a search and look for his uh, burial record. Okay, anything else? I don't see any more questions at this time, John. Um, I've got one, you know, if, if you're researching in Los Angeles County or Los Angeles City, does the Hall of Records, do you know if the Hall of Records there on Hill Street, do they have any really old records or are they more like the modern Los Angeles? You know, I did some research in the Hall of Records there once about elections of um, Spanish people in the 1850s and 60s. So I was doing research like that. Uh, oh, well, come to think of it, let's take a look how far back to Los Angeles. Because you're you're talking about mainly um, vital records? Not vital, more so court records, possibly. Um, well, let's look here, court records, 1854 to 1938. It looks like you can go into here. Now, um, so they do have some court records, but what you'd be interested in would be the Southern District of California, probably. But you see, they do have this. And let's see what this other one is. Miscellaneous records. Um, I'll show you the Southern District shortly, but I wanted to check out the vital records. And looks like with regards to the vital records, here are the marriages starting with 1851. Okay, this is what the SCGS did. So they, they don't have this here. But they may have original birth records, 1849 to 1901. Let's take a look at that. County recorder. And let's go into it. And there you are. With the index. So I'm, I strongly stress that when you're interested in vital records, a lot of them are online already. And now I know... Go ahead. We're, we're really lucky in Los Angeles. Family Search has digitized, I think, all of the death certificates up to about 1960. Yeah, quite a few. It says marriage records here up to 1950, I believe. Some of them are indexed, some are not. Now, regarding the Southern District of California, 
Oh, not supposed to do that in place. Have to do it for keywords. California court. So I'm using four keywords. Okay, here it is. California Southern District the Naturalization Index starting 1915. Private land grant cases, U.S. District Northern and South. As you can see, they have quite a few records here. Um, I see Northern District here, but I wanted to find Southern District. Well, come to think of it, let's go into this Northern District. So you see a lot of things here. But let me go to California in general, because this is where you find these, in case any of you are interested in this kind of search. Oops. I'm putting that A in there where it shouldn't be. When you go to California, the general search, you go to court records. There are nine of them. And what you can find is you have the Admiralty case files for U.S. District, Northern District. But you also, as I recall, should have the Southern District, but I don't see it here. That's funny. I could have sworn there was a there was Southern District uh, stuff, too. I'm a little disappointed to find that. Maybe they're mixed in together. So these are also in the National Archives, but you do have them here as well. So the good thing to do is just do various keyword searches using the word courts, and eventually you'll get to what you're looking for. John, have you ever um, gone to or, or used the Catholic Archival Center here in Los Angeles? I think they have the Our Lady of, um, um, our Queen of Angels church records there. So I was, yes, I did. Okay. What was your experience? Did you, did you find that they had some interesting resources there to access? Uh, they were giving, they weren't allowing copies of the actual records. So they issue you uh, a document and you wouldn't get the original copy. But... If you go into a library, here are the church records. This is for Los Angeles, city of Los Angeles. Right here is Our Lady Queen of Angels, which is also included up to 1850 in the Huntington database. And we can't access these from home. And some of them are very light, but these are really good records if you're searching your... California roots. And we also have not only Our Lady Queen of Angels, Los Angeles, but the San Gabriel church records are also here. But once again, you have to go into the library. To look at them. <clears throat> so with regards to mission records, for most of them, you have to go into the library. But for a couple that I already showed you, you can also go in and find them from the comfort of your home, but not most of them. So here are the San Gabriel records, but as you can see, they are locked. But you can see the originals when you go into the library. Too bad they aren't available from home. I don't live that far from <clears throat> excuse me, from the Southern, Cal uh, the uh, Los Angeles uh, Family Search Library. But uh, for a lot of people, it's kind of difficult to go in. And then here you have baptismal records for both those churches. And you're able to go directly into this. So if you want to do some searching, go in here. I seem to recall this. So these are baptismal records for San Gabriel Mission and the Plaza Church 
up to 1873. They are not the originals, but they are the extracts. So you can go in here and study these. Then you can go to the library and actually look at the originals. Boy, I'm glad I found this because I didn't find this before. <laughs> so I don't think it's in your handouts. But just remember, I went to San Gabriel and I went to church records. One is the originals, 1771, 1908. The other one are called baptismal records. And they are actual extracts made by the Daughters of the American Revolution and then associated with Thomas Workman Temple. And then these extracts here uh, that you see is the third entry. I think you have to go in to see those. But uh, this is a really important find for any of you who are interested, who have uh, ancestors that uh, live there. Oops, what did I do? Oh, I think you might have um, jumped out of your, or closed out your. Oh. Web page. Okay, are there any more um, searches? I don't see any. Um, I, I did. John, do you want to bring your video up for a moment? Is I mean, you don't, or you don't have to if you don't want. But um, I just wanted to mention too that if you wanted to use newspapers to do some of your early California ancestral research over the COVID year, we sent out a lot of our old. Los Angeles newspapers to newspapers.com and they digitized um, a few like the Los Angeles Star, which um, the earliest news story was 1855. And so you can access that if you have newspapers.com or if you're at one of our uh, libraries, just look at our, um, we have a historical Los Angeles newspapers area on our database and you can access it there. I just realized there's something I would like to show you can you see okay. that family search screen right now? Yes. Can you see how do you want to get started? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm going to go to NARA Advanced Search National Archives. And do you see that now? Yes. Okay. This is where you want to look if you're looking for Indian records, say, from Santa Inez. You can use quotes here. Now, they're going to have census records, but you can go to those using um, Family Search or, or Ancestry.com. But uh, I wanted to point out that if any of you have ancestors who... Um, had to register as aliens, you can find that information here. I found a lot of alien registrations, for example, for Mendoza and Santa Barbara. And right here, you can go to indexes for naturalizations. And then if it's an A file, meaning an alien registration file, then you have to send it. And they are kind of expensive. I have to admit, but uh, I, I used it to search for um, several people and I really got big files, like 20 to 40 pages of files, including their FBI record and uh, testimony from other people. So uh, these A files can be very useful. I wouldn't say they're worth the $60 or so I paid for them, but they, they are they are pretty useful. John, we do have a question that came in. Isabella is asking if there are resources to help her find pre-revolutionary Mexican documents. Do you know? Um, what kind of Mexican documents? Baptisms, marriages? We'll see if she answers, but you could address vital records, maybe. Well, you would want to go to a particular um, city or place, like, a, let's say, Nochislan, Zacatecas. Here are the church records. And the parish records go back to 1627. 
there are a lot of mission records here uh, in this database, and you can access them from the comfort of your home. But are you asking for some other kind of records? That's what I'm She curious. just noted uh, that anything helps. So um, possibly those, maybe- Is there a place that you're interested in? Let's see. I'm not sure if she knows that, John, but. Uh, when you're doing these searches, you should probably really try and have a place because it's very difficult um, to give a state and just say, well, they're from somewhere in that state. But but you're, the way to start is just go to this search and put in the name and maybe some other information about the person you're looking for, like Ramon Martinez, let's say Tepetongo, Zacatecas, Mexico, probably born 1777. <clears throat> and if you know the parents' names, it's better to include them. Let's just say the father's name is Martinez, which is obvious. And I get 852. Um, they're probably giving us a lot of stuff about Martinez. And then, of course, right here, you can see from Mazapil, Zacatecas, there's something. So if you have any question about anything, I would say the first thing you should do is just do a general search because you may get lucky. But for the most part, you really need to get more specific um, information about locations. She uh, yeah. did, did mention Jalisco, Mexico, but it, it would be the same kind of procedure that you just showed for your example. A place correct? in Jalisco? Jalisco, Mexico was the location she gave. Okay, well, Jalisco is pretty big. Um, we can go to Teo called Tiche, Jalisco, Mexico. The important thing about doing family research is getting as much information as you can get. Right here, we have a, a Jose Ramon Lorenzo Martinez from Tequila, Jalisco. And you have his main information here, the names of his parents and godparents. And you actually have the film to look at. So I think what you really need to do is you need to go to the catalog and have a place to look for because Mexico is big and so is Jalisco. So um, I don't think, you know, with the way most, unless the name is really rare, the surname is really, really rare, you're going to be getting a lot of hits. So it's better to narrow it down, try and have names of parents, birth date, marriage date, things like that. But for example, Tequila Jalisco, go to that. Their church records go back to 1649. And quite a few of them, but not all of them, are indexed. But uh, it is good to have as much information as you can get. Do you um, have any information on this question? Can you see it, John? Let's see. How would one of an ancestors who entered the flavor? Um, you know, there's been work done on this. I have one Bracero record, but that's because a friend of mine gave it to me. And I think there's work being done to get these Bracero records compiled. But I don't know about that, what the status of it is at this time. But I think there are resources. But I, to my knowledge, you wouldn't be able to do it on, um, let's go to Ancestry.com just for the fun of it. Go to the search screen, all collections, 
Then go view all. And let's put in the word Brissettos. Brissetto. See if that gets anything. Nothing. So, yeah, I think there, there are people. I would Google it and try and find out who's working on that. But uh, through these two systems, Ancestry.com, Family Search, no, I don't think you can get much. Sorry. That is mighty fine, John. Thank you for uh, all the, the answers you provided. I think we've run out of questions at this time. Um, and people can watch this after the fact, of course. Uh, and they'll probably have more questions. But um, you've given us a really good start. Okay. And then the, the handout will be Absolutely. useful for people. Absolutely. And if any of you had trouble downloading the handout, just send me an email, uh, even if it's long, a long time after, after um, this presentation airs live, and I'll email it to you. All right, John. Well, thank you so much, as always, for helping us with such interesting um, topics of research. You always have something going on that's interesting. Yeah. And uh, so right we'll now wait. it's World War II. Yeah, that's cool. Um, did you want to show your website just in case people? Oh, might that's be... right. Um, yeah. That's... Let me bring because his website is really amazing, um, and with a, a lot of his presentations uh, and information about different eras of history. My website, indigenousmexico.org. You can go to articles by state. So, for example, you can go to Jalisco, and you'll find out Jalisco is one of my favorite states. So I have a lot of stuff about Jalisco and its indigenous people. A lot. <laughs> and then um, I'm interested in ethnic identity. So I have articles about um, the Germans and the extranieros, the foreigners, and the Africans that lived in Mexico. Then there's a section just about genealogy. And um, I even have one on the Huntington Library searching. Hopefully you're gonna get a good source for that in November in the genealogy garage. But I do talk about searching for indigenous roots. And then in regards to California, after you go past all these Mexican states, you can come to California. And I did a presentation some time ago on Southern California's Native American tribes. And right here, you can go into it and you can go through the various pages. I talk about the various Indian tribes in the course of this. And I also did one on the diversity of the Shumash people. And in that one, I even talked about the multitude of languages that were spoken. And I had donated a page to each language group. It starts right here. The Northern Shumash, the Central Shumash, which is divided into four and then the Migdiano and Koyama, and the Island Shumash, and the San Fernando Valley Shumash. So I, I thought it was a very interesting presentation to prepare for. And now it's available for you to see if you want to. So like I said, it's indigenousmexico.org. You can go to articles by state, ethnic identity, census, politics in which I talk about the Mexican War of Independence, but I also talk about the Cristero Rebellion and about the Revolution. So that might interest some of you. The Mexican Revolution was so complex. It can get pretty, pretty complicated because there's so many characters in it. But I did try to sort them all out here from 1910. I even had this Mexican Revolution timeline. So I tried to uh, help people understand more about it. 
because people were coming and going and getting killed all the time in the Mexican Revolution. And so I tried to put it all together in a way that maybe people can follow it. And even this, I have to admit, it's hard to put it, put it all together and keep it in your mind. But I, anyway, I tried. Well, thanks, John. That's an amazing website you have. And uh, I put the URL up a little bit so people know to check it out. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I really appreciate okay, your generosity. You. And I'm sure I'll call upon you again in, in the future. All right, sounds good. All right. So and thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.